Welcome to the class students. Today in this class we are starting our new chapter that is third chapter classification and the tabulation. In last class, last chapter that is previous chapter, second chapter we have discussed about the different methods of collection of data. Usually the data collected is very complex in nature. So, it cannot be understand easy and uh, easily and also not suitable for our statistical analysis. Such data need to be arranged, grouped and classified according to similar characteristics based on the characteristics processed by the items of the data. The classification and tabulation are the process of organizing of the data. The classification and the tabulation or the process of organizing the data that is we are arranging the data in a systematic manner. Classification of the data. According to Professor Orak Sekris, classification is the process of arranging the data into sequence and groups according to their common characteristics or separating them into different but related part. First we will see the same characteristics and we will group that the common characteristics for based on the common characteristics we will separate the data then we will do the analysis. Let us see the definition of classification. Classification is the process of arranging the data in a group or classes according to common characteristics possessed by the items of the data processed by the items of the data. This is sorting of different items that is observations on the basis of similar characteristics processed by the items constituting in the data. If you are having the same characteristics for example in, our, in college or in a classroom we will separate the data as boys and girls based on the sex we will separate the data so that is boys and the girls. Let us see some objectives. The main objectives of the classifications are to reduce the size of the data. Classification reduce the vast and voluminous data into hand, handy size. Uh, while we are doing the survey, we will collect all the informations. Based on that, that information we have to give the interpretation. First, we will reduce the size of the data. Next, to bring the similarities together, the characteristics or we will simplify that. The classification simplifies the data by similar uh, by arranging similarities and dissimilarities continue contained in the data. Similar items we will group it into one and uh, dissimilarities or dissimilar items we will group it into another. To felicitate comparison helps in comparing of the data based on the characteristics. To give importance to significant features of the data to enable further statistical analysis. It helps in further statistical analysis. These are five major objectives of the classification. Next we will see some types of classification. Generally classification of the data is made on the following basis. One is chronological classification that is temporal classification, geographical classification, qualitative classification, quantitative classification. Let us see one by one what do you mean by different types of classification. First one is chronological classification. Chronological means orderly arranged of data according to time, date of happening of an event according to the time or on which date it has happened according to that we will classify the data. If the data are arranged over a different period of then time then the type of then the type of classification we call it as chronological classification and the example for this is population of the India from 1931 to 2011 you just see that slide this is the best example for that. Next here in this example they have given the year and it is in order that is 1931 to 2011 and that uh, along with that population in millions they have given this is the best example for chronological classification. Next is geographical classification. If the data is classified on the basis of geographical or location or area, area wise such as cities, districts, states, uh, countries like that 
etc. It is called geographical classification based on the areas and the localities if we divide the data that we call it as geographical classification and this is the example for that geographical classification production of sugar in some states in India here they have given the name of the states and sugar production of different states. Qualitative classification. If the data is classified on the basis of the qualitative characteristics or attributes, you know what you mean by attributes, it is a qualitative characteristics such as sex, literacy, employment and religion etc. is called qualitative classification. Classification of the units on the basis of the single characteristic is simple or one way classification. Here in while we are classifying the qualitative classification doing the qualitative classification we have if we consider only single characteristics that is a religion different religions are there if it is literacy whether it is literate or illiterate like that if we consider only single characteristics that type of classification is simple or one way classification and this is the example for that classification You just go through these examples. Next, quantitative classification. The classification of the units on the basis of quantitative characteristics or variables such as height, weight, wages, age in years, number of children, number of phone calls, number of births, number of deaths, etc. is called quantitative classification based on the quantity based on the numbers based on the variables if we divide the data if we do the classification that is called quantitative classification and these are the examples for that uh, classifications we just go through this examples see let's see some definitions for this uh, in this classification okay First one will be the frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is a systematic presentation of the values taken by the variables along with the frequencies. It's a systematic presentation of the values taken by the variables along with their frequencies. Along with the frequencies, if we see this, if we consider this, we just see the example given here. In this number of apples per box and number of boxes are there. Apples per box, we call it as x. And the distribution number of boxes we call it as frequencies. This type of classification we call it as frequency distributions. Okay. And frequency refers to the number of times an observation is repeated. The number of observations corresponding to particular class is known as the class frequency. Class frequency is a positive integer including 0. It is a class Class frequency is always uh, is a positive integer and it will also take in the value 0, it will consider the value 0. While framing the frequency distribution, if the class interval, intervals are not considered, it is called de, uh, uh, discrete frequency distribution. If we will not consider the interval, the range, then it is called discrete frequency distribution and you just see this example for discrete frequency distribution. Here number of children and number of families are there. Number of children we call it as x and number of families we call it as f frequencies. Next is continuous frequency distribution. While framing a frequency distribution, if class intervals are considered, if we consider the class intervals and it is called continuous frequency distribution. Already we have solved so many problems for continuous and discrete uh, distributions and problems and uh, continuous data and the discrete case data. So it is very easy to identify okay and this is the example for continuous frequency distribution. This formation of continuous frequency distribution. Suitable class intervals are formed on the basis of the magnitude of the data based on the data. If the data is very, very large, our class interval will be the, the range of the class interval will be more. For each value, a tally mark is marked against the class in which it falls. This process is continue until all the values are exhausted. The tallies of each class are counted and written as frequency of that 
class. To construct a continuous frequency distribution table, it is essential to know the following factors. Uh, uh, we have to solve some problems on this, okay, in later class we will see that. First before that we will see some uh, definitions for this. One is range. It is the difference between highest and lowest value in the data. We know that what is range, the definition of range is the difference between the highest and lowest value of the data. That is very, very important. We have to see that while we are constructing the continuous frequency distribution. Next class, the sub range is called class. First we will see the highest and the lowest number. Then we, again we will divide that into subclasses ranges okay that sub range is called class class limit the lowest and the highest values which are taken to define the boundaries of a class or class limits the lowest value is called lower limit and the highest value is called upper limit the low you just see this the uh, while we are solving the problem already we know that what is upper limit and the what is lower limit. Um, you can go through this example. In, in this classification, in this um, class limits also we have two types. One is inclusive classes, one is another one is exclusive classes. In a class if lower as well as upper limits are included in the same class, such a class is called inclusive class. Your upper limit of the class is not equal to the lower limit of the next class. Example 0 to 9, 10 to 19, etc. These are some inclusive class intervals, okay? Inclusive classes. In inclusive classes, upper and lower limit will be included for the same range, for that same group, okay? Next is exclusive class. In a class, if the lower limit is included in the same class and the upper limit is excluded from that class, but included in the next class, such a class we call it as exclusive classes. Here upper limit of the class is equal to the lower limit of the next class. And the example is this. We know that already we have gone through what is inclusive and the exclusive classes while we are solving the problems in analysis of univariate data. Next, we want correction factor. It is half of the difference between the lower limit of a class and upper limit of the preceding class. In uh, while solving the problem, we have gone through some class intervals that is 0 to 9, 10 to 19 like that. In that interval, we will make those classes to continuous, then we will solve the problems. That correction factor here we are discussing. You just go through this example so that you will come to know about what do you mean by a correction factor. Here they have given the class interval 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49. So we have to make this continuous. So we have taken the upper limit, upper limit minus lower limit. Then we will divide that by 2. So it will become half that is 0 0.5. So to make this continuous, we will add 0 0.5 to upper limit and we will subtract 0 0.5 from the lower limit. So that we can make this to this class interval as continuous. Next is open end classes. In a class, if the lower or upper limit of the class is not specified, such a class is called open end classes. See your open end classes means here in uh, upper limit also or in a lower limit will not uh, specified. It will not given the specific values. Uh, such type of classes we call it as open end classes. And this is the example for open end classes. Next is how to find class mark or a midpoint. The central value of the class is called midpoint or class mark. The central value of the point we call it as a midpoint. Uh, it is the average of class limits and you know how to find the midpoints. Already we have gone through those problems. Next is what is width or size of the classes. The difference between the upper and lower limits of the class is called width of the class. It is denoted by C or I, okay, width of the classes. And um, next number of classes, the number of classes can be obtained by using the, the number of classes can be obtained uh, using some uh, formula that is number of classes is 1 plus 3.322 into log n, n is number of observation so that we can find the width of the classes can also be obtained by this formula that is range divided by number of classes so that we can use this while uh, constructing the 
while we are doing the classification or the tabulations. Next is cumulative frequency that is LCF. The added up frequencies are called cumulative frequencies. There are two types of cumulative frequencies. One is less than type, another one is more than type. The number of observations or the frequencies below a certain limit is less than frequency. You already know what is LCF that is less than cumulative frequency. And the frequency distribution formed for less than cumulative frequencies against upper class limits is less than cumulative frequency distributions. And more than cumulative frequency distribution is the frequency distribution formed for more than cumulative frequencies against lower class limits is more than cumulative frequency distributions. And these two are the examples you just see this example using seeing this example you can come to know about what is less than frequencies and what is more than cumulative frequencies. Next is frequency density. The frequency per unit of class is called the frequency density or it is a ratio of class frequency to the width of that class intervals. Ratio of the class frequency to the width of that class interval. So, frequency density is frequency of the class divided by width of the class. We just see this one. Frequency density can be calculated and this is one of the example for uh, calculating the frequency densities. Next is frequency, relative frequency. It is a ratio of frequency of the value of the variable to the total frequency. That is uh, relative frequency is frequency of value of the variable divided by total frequency. Frequency of value of the variable divided by total frequencies. So, just see this example again. This example uh, for calculating the relative frequencies. And we have some uh, principles or rules for classification. Let us see that. First is the number of classes should generally between 4 and 15. Number of classes should be 4 and 15. Exclusive classes should be formed for better continuity between the class intervals. Yes. Instead of taking the inclusive class intervals, if we consider exclusive type of class interval, it is very easy to calculate. The width of the classes should be usually kept constant throughout the distribution or may be different for proper meaning of subject matter of the data. If the width of the class interval, for example, if the width of the class interval, if you are taking 5, that 5 should be constant for all the class intervals or if you take 10, it should be constant for all the intervals. That should be followed. Avoid open end classes, we have to see this. Because the mid values of such class cannot be easily computed. Yes, this is, uh, this is the point, this advantages in that if we consider the open end classes, mid, we cannot calculate the midpoint for that particular class. The classes should be arranged in ascending or descending order. We know that the lower limit of the first class should be multiple of 5. The lower limit of the first class should be multiple of 5. If it is multiple of 5, it is easy to calculate the width of the class interval, the range, everything we can calculate easily. Thank you.